we've got the Porsche Panamera. With three magical letters, GTS. Giddy up. Oh, Panamera, power. oh how I love thee. What's under the hood of the GTS? A four liter twin turbo V8 with an eight speed PDK, 473 horsepower and 457 pound feet of torque. It goes zero to 100 in 3.9 seconds and has a top speed of 300 kilometers an hour. So the way I always describe a GTS model is the turbo, in this case with the Panamera, the Turbo S, but with less power. So the yeah. Turbo S has 620 horsepower Power, and this one has less, but it's pretty much the same other than that. Yeah, and it feels really good, whether you have it sport mode or sport plus, you've got that dynamic drive to it, but then you put it in comfort and it just slows things right down and you can take an easy going pace. So this straddles two worlds, luxury and performance, and it does both of them incredibly well. Yeah. It's got this real chameleon effect where it does whatever you're in the mood for. If you're just commuting, no problem. You wanna go fast, well do that too. Yeah. Still to come, we have questions, coffee and cars. Our hot topic. For your consideration. Vital whole, stats. Oh, that too. But right now it's time for, what do you get with this car? What are the key standard features? The GTS in Canada comes standard with a 12.3 inch touchscreen two 7-inch digital displays in the instrument cluster, wireless Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto, heated front sport seats, 18-way power front seats with memory package, heated sport steering wheel, automatic tailgate, LED headlights, tinted three-dimensional LED taillights and lighting strip, and 20 inch wheels. So you've got a dial on the steering wheel there. You can change the sports settings. What are we gonna put it in? You gotta put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when all those videos drop and then you can watch them. Five a week, we do this, a couple car review every Wednesday. Every Saturday, we put out another couple car review. Monday, it's the live show. Tuesday's always a comparison. Friday, some cool old collectible car. The only way to find out is to subscribe or follow on Instagram. It's most Motormouth underscore Andrea. For me, it's Motormouth underscore Auto, and the links are below. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code Motormouth to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. This GTS is the best of both worlds. It kind of feels like a 911, but then you get the convenience of a four-door sedan. This V8 is the least expensive in the Panamera lineup. Everything underneath it is a V6, V6 hybrid. So I'm sure a lot of you are asking the question, why would you buy a Panamera? Why wouldn't you just get the full electric Porsche Taycan? Well, wait, 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 pump the brakes. It's coming up in our hot topic. I really love this V8 engine. Although it doesn't have the most horsepower at 473, it just works really well. I think it is so agile. The steering is what you would expect from a Porsche. Whether you're on the highway or in the city, it really is a terrific vehicle to drive. This V8 is phenomenal. What I'm the most impressed with though is the calibration. Hit it, punch the, past the truck. Is, um, Sounds is the calibration of the PDK. It is so responsive and quick but isn't jerky either. I think this transmission and the way it's programmed with the V8 is a masterpiece. Yeah, it is so smooth. Now, how about the looks? This is carmine red. This is the color I would get. I think it's a showstopper. I would like this, but I would like the Sport Turismo. We haven't even touched on that. So you can get this with what they call a shooting brake or yeah. kind of like a station wagon hatchback looking version of this. You don't like the look of that one. No, I love this. I think it looks a little too long for me this is a really good balance on this Panamera this is definitely my favorite so you get all the dark trim on this the window trim is black you get a, a, a sort of a smoky look on the headlamps and the tail lamps this is exclusive to the GTS model I love the light strip in the back and the matrix design LED headlights Porsche's done a great job 
And they had to change it years ago because the first one a lot of people didn't like. As I said off the beginning, I always loved the Panamera, even yeah. the first one, because I'd driven so many of them. Once you drive one of these, you go, hmm, I get it now. I also think it was very unique looking for the time when it came out. There wasn't a lot around, I so think, it stood out. I think it's going to be a collectible car. I think those early Panameras, especially the high horsepower, the GTS, the turbos, they're going to go up in value in the long run. Now, the inside, I'm kind of mixed on this. It's yeah. very nice looking, but it's not exactly the most user friendly. What I like about the inside is the Alcantara. We have a special package and it comes with the Carmine Red stitching and the GTS logo in red. The Alcantara is really soft to the touch. The wheel has it as well as the roof lining. But I got to tell you, this wheel is really hard. And skinny. And like, skinny. Yeah, a lot of sport wheels that we get to drive in modern cars, they're thicker. It's kind of an odd choice, but you know what? I want to get into the middle here. Well, because before you start that, Zach, I just want to ask you, what do you think of these seats for comfort level if you went on a long trip? If, Can you get comfortable in them? If you asked me today or any day, what car would you pick to drive across the country? And we're talking day after day of driving you're looking at it. The yeah. Panamera, hands down, is the car I would choose for a cross-country bomber. So I think yeah. the seats are great. Me too, so comfortable. All right, back to the middle here. I like the screen. It's a big screen. It's a bit buggy. We'll get to that in questions, coffee and cars. <laughs> but they went away from all the buttons to this plastic thing in the middle, and I don't like it. I don't like the piano black. I think that it just takes away from the whole luxurious look of the Panamera. Do some brushed aluminum in here. I think that that's what it needs. Hey, maybe we're just being a little bit fussy about it all. But when you're paying this kind of money, you really want it to look a certain way. All right, so the back seat is really quite Quite usable. The original Panamera was designed for a six foot four tall human. Yeah. So the back seat, even though they changed the roof line, they kept the seating position and it can still fit a large human. All right, we have our new feature, carry on in a cooler. How did the Panamera do? It did really well. That cargo space back there is huge for a sedan. You could fit two back there, two of each. The thing is, this car is so practical because you get a bit of an SUV vibe. You've got the big lift gate like an SUV, a massive cargo area. Easy there, Drea. Can't get enough of that. And uh, so, yeah, it's a functional car. You know what we have to do now, Andrea? We've got to get to those questions and some yeah. coffee. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Considering the price of the tested model, it lines up well with the BMW M5 competition. Which one would you pick purely for track performance? So I would pick the M5 competition because it has 617 horsepower, which is pretty amazing. But I would pick this Panamera for everyday driving because I prefer the exterior, the interior, I prefer the and badge. the performance. <laughs> Here's the thing about both cars. The M5 has gotten too big and fat. Sure, it's fast. They just put more power in it. Yeah. But it's not a car you would take to the track. Uh, older M5s maybe, but this new one is too big. Same with this. This isn't a track car. Uh, it's too big. It's too heavy. I have driven it on the track, but the reality is you're going to go to the track with a 911. Okay, but what would you pick of the two? You'd pick the M5 too. I, I picked the M5, yeah. but that's just straight power. I, I mean, it, it, it's... It, I would get a 911. I think the aircon vents adjustable via the main screen. It is too complicated. Why do they do that? Oh, way well, too complicated. Let's just explain what happens here. So there's vents in the middle of the center console. Yeah. There's no little sticky thing that you can move around. You have to go in the screen. You have to access a menu to be able to move them. It's ridiculous. I mean, I get why they've streamlined this center console with piano black it looks a little bit more tech dusty, oriented dusty, dusty but this is just way too complicated and it can be a little bit glitchy we've had some issues with ours there's something going on this is called the pcm unit yeah porsche communications management there's something going on with this individual car it probably needs a software, software update. update i was thinking that software update needed you know what we need in here we need the 2021 porsche macan center console Wouldn't right here good? with uh, all of the buttons yeah oh. so good or the old panamera with all the buttons 
Yeah, or the old Panamera or the old Cayenne. All those old ones, they were really good. How does the engine sound? Does it have the crackle, burble in sport mode? Well, it doesn't have the sound of the old naturally aspirated V8. That yeah. 4.8 liter is fantastic. By the way, it's the same engine we have in our Cayenne GTS. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that makes a lot of noise and uses a lot of gas. So they downsize it, turbocharge it. It sounds good, but not the same. No, I, I like it. I think it sounds really great. I mean, you put it in Sport, Sport Plus, and that V8, what a terrific sound. It's a, it's a wonderful car. And that's it. Thank you so much for all your questions. Keep them coming. We love interacting with you. Motormouth underscore Andrea to get a question in. And now because you hear the music, it's time for nightlife. We keep one question back from Questions Coffee and Cars and expand on it. It's our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? I love every GTS iteration of Porsches. My question is, are they going to continue the Panamera line alongside of the electric Taycan in the future? A Taycan doesn't sound like that. No, that's the thing. I get that there's some crossover between the Taycan and the Panamera, especially this, you know, GTS or any, even a hybrid for that matter, but you're not going to get this engine sound. And I really believe that these are two different buyers. Yeah. You either want a powerful V8 engine yeah. at your disposal, or you want the new technology full electric, which is very quick, very fast, all of that kind of stuff. But one thing about the difference between the two is this is a bigger car. Yeah. The back seat of Taycan is yeah, it's a little tight. And it's heavier. It's a heavier car. And you notice that actually with the battery of Taycan, to mitigate that they have air suspension. Yeah. Now it's in some instances it can feel a little bit um, nauseating. A little bit, <laughs> but, for sure. It's just so smooth and it's so quick and there's nothing wrong with that if you like that EV feel, but I just prefer this GTS and the V8. I know it's not environmentally friendly. I get it, but it sounds so good. The last time I checked, it's not illegal to sell gasoline cars, <laughs> Andrea. Now, one of the problems, so back to your question, are they going to get rid of this? I think the big issue that Porsche has is they have over 20 versions of Panamera Go on the website, check for yourself. There's over 20 versions of this car yeah. between gas, extended wheelbase versions, hybrid, and then you double all of those to make the Sport Turismo models. Yeah. It's, it's way too confusing. So what I'd like them to do is get rid of two thirds of them. Streamline it. If it is competing a little bit with the Taycan, that's okay. But if you streamline the models and pick the ones that sell, I think that Porsche is gonna be better off. Well, they do have the plug-in hybrid for a reason because in many jurisdictions, we have a regular commenter who lives in Paris yeah. and says there's restrictions in downtown Paris if the car doesn't have a plug. So someone can have a Panamera with a plug and they kind of get around that little loophole. Smart. It's smart. So that kind of stuff I, I could see happening. I would suspect in the long run, this will go away though. It's no. A, it's going to be electric. No. Oh yeah, I bet you in the long run it's going away. No. Yeah. I'm going to have to buy a used one then. Yes. Hey. Hey. Oh, I love when you talk <laughs> dirty like that. The Panamera in the driveway. Yeah. Nice. In Carmine Red. All Thank right. Thank you very much. You know what? Let's get into what else you can buy with a lot of money. For your consideration. Four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the BMW M5 competition with a twin turbo 4.4 liter V8, an eight speed automatic transmission, 617 horsepower, and a starting price of $122,000. Next is the Mercedes Benz AMG GT63 with a twin turbo 4 liter V8, just like this, nine speed automatic transmission. 577 horsepower and a starting price of $163,000. The Audi RS7 has a twin turbo 4 liter V8 that pairs with a 48 volt hybrid system, an 8 speed automatic transmission, 591 horsepower, and a starting price of almost $126,500. The one I'd pick, the Cadillac CT5V Blackwing with a 6.2 liter supercharged V8, standard six speed manual transmission or optional 10 speed automatic, 668 horsepower and a starting price of just $86,000. 
$88,000 Canadian. That's a deal. So there are four high performance sedans for you to consider. Now this is a Porsche. It's a big luxury sports sedan. It's gonna be pricey. How pricey, Zach? I tell you what, let's get into the vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The Panamera starts at just under $101,000. The Panamera GTS, just under $149,000. And price as tested on our GTS model is just under $175,000. JD Power gives the 2021 Panamera GTS an overall score of 79 out of 100 and a quality and reliability score of 81 out of 100. Car Edge states the Panamera will retain 39% of its value after five years. Here's the fuel economy. 15.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 11.2 on the highway. That's 15 miles per gallon city, 21 miles per gallon highway. The warranty is four years, 80,000 kilometers or 50,000 miles. I just want to touch on that 39% resale value. I think that that's a little bit low oh, yeah. for a Panamera. Yeah, I've looked for used Panameras because I'm a bit obsessed with this car. So I'm regularly looking at what you can buy them for. There's not a chance in hell you're getting one of these for 35% of its original MSRP. Well, so just keep in mind sedans aren't that popular anymore. So that's where that figure could be coming from. Lightning round, two things you like, two things you like to see change. Well, I love the exterior of this Panamera, especially in this red color. And I love how it handles and drives with this V8 engine. What I'd like to see an improvement on, and how about making this infotainment system a little bit more intuitive, and let's add wireless Android Auto. I love the engine, I love the handling. What I'd like to see improved is change the center console. I don't wanna to have to go into a menu to change the vents and switch the volume knob around. That's something that needs to be done as well. What's not to love, it's practicality certainly doesn't get in the way of its sporty character. Well, are we gonna have V8 powered large sedans for long? I don't know. You might wanna get this while you can. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.